Hey guys, welcome back. So this time we are going to look at one of the most common topics in any API automation course, right? So whenever you are working with an API, you need authorization because not every API is open in the market, right? So most of the APIs does have some kind of authorization through which you can access that API. So you need to use some kind of authorization. It may be a API key, it may be a OAuth key, it may be a token, personal access token, right? So there are so many kinds of authorization keys. Now we are going to briefly look at uh, what are the types of API authorization which is available in Postman. We are going to look at specifically a type of authorization which is called the bearer token. So we are going to generate a bearer token and then we are going to use it in our requests, right? We are going to see how we can send the request using this authorization, which is the better token. And we are also going to add that authorization into a collection rather than just a request, right? So after we add that into a collection, we, we can then inherit that authorization for every request rather than writing authorization for each request, we will be inheriting it from a collection so we are going to look at that option now before i start i would really recommend you to subscribe to your youtube channel qs script if you are new to this channel it's very beneficial if you can subscribe here because whenever i add a new video for any particular tool or topic you will be notified immediately right so you won't miss out on any new videos available in our channel now we have lots of other playlists which you can also browse when you visit our QS script channel. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not done already, right? Now going back to Postman, uh, we have been using this weather API for all our um, previous videos, but this time around we are going to look at some other API which is called the GitHub API. Now GitHub, as you know, is the most commonly used open source source code management right tool um, so it has got a lot of open apis right but it just requires you to generate a access token in order to access all these apis so we are going to look at how you can generate that token and then how we can use these apis in github okay so before that, let's go ahead and create a new collection because we are going to work on a different API. It's better to have a different collection. So I'm going to name this collection GitHub and let's go and create it, right? Now we will be adding a request, but uh, before that, let me show you or, or let me just add a new, new, so let me just add a new request in the, into the collection so that I can show you, right? So this request will be um, get all repositories, right? So it's a common API used in GitHub. We are going to look at what it is, but let me just create this uh, on the collection and save it to the GitHub collection, right? So once I create it, let's open it and once you are on this um, request body right so you can go to the authorization tab and here you will find a drop down right so by default it is this option is selected inherit auth from parent now we are going to look at that what it is now there are several others which i mentioned right so the first uh, is no auth right that means no authentication is required so if you choose this uh, no authentication will be submitted along with the headers okay and then uh, the api key so if you have a key and value pair for your api then you can enter this and it will be added to this header then we have the bearer token right so we are going to look at that then uh, we have something called basic auth. So if any API is accepting a username and password, you can give that. Um, this is the digest auth. Now it's pretty similar to basic auth, right? But there are some advanced options here, which you can use like the algorithm, 
uh, client nonce, nonce count, right? So there are a number of different options for digest auth authentication. Now, OAuth, uh, these are the uh, two more advanced authentication types, right? OAuth 1.0 is the older version of it. Uh, nowadays, applications are using OAuth 2.0. It, it, it has also got an access token, but uh, you need to fill out some details before um, accessing this access token, which will be generated after you provide a certain client ID or a client key, right? So we'll, we'll look at it later, how you can generate this O2.0 for a specific API. Then there is something called Hawk authentication. It uh, accepts Hawk authentication ID and uh, authentication key it accepts algorithm and aws signature is mostly for the aws api right or amazon api where you can give uh, access key and a secret key which is generated for aws accounts you can also select the aws region service name and session token and ntlm authentication so this will again accept a username and password and a domain and workstation can also be provided, right? So there are a number of different authorization types. Now it depends on the application of your API, which type of authentication they are accepting, right? Or they are using, depending on the same, you are going to use the same kind of authorization, right? So for our case, it's the better token. Now let's go to the GitHub API and we will generate a better token right so this is my github account i have already logged in into it it's pretty pretty easy to create a github account if you don't have one so go ahead and create one and once you go into the account profile right uh, or the menu you can go to the settings account settings and there you will find the developer settings so click on that here you will find three options and out of that we require the personal access tokens okay so go there and here we can generate a new token or also use an existing token but for learning purpose let's generate a new token right we need to give it a name so i'm going to give it name training i am going to give the scope as um full control of the private repositories because I want to uh, play around the repositories in GitHub, right? Then I don't want to give any other scope to this particular token, right? So we're going to look at it, how look at later how the scope affects our API access, okay? So let's go ahead and generate this token now. Once you generate, it will generate this token and you can copy it so that we can use it in our postman right so now let's go ahead and select the bearer token here um, I'm going to replace this existing one with the token which I have generated right so paste it here now uh, we need a request URL with this token so let's go ahead and look at our github repository or github repository api right so once you go to this developer.github.com it will show you lots of apis which are available now in that i have selected this repositories right and it will list down all the apis related to the repositories now the first uh, request which i want to send is the list repositories for the authenticated user right so this is the endpoint and so let me get the grab the url for uh, github api right so this is the url https github api.github.com so let's grab this and enter the base url here and then we can use the specific endpoint which is the user and repos okay so Let's paste it here. And this is our complete endpoint URL, URL endpoint, right? So what we can do first is let's remove this token and send this re request 
without using any token here okay so let's observe what is the error here as you can see if you don't provide any authorization it is going to give you a message 401 status uh, unauthorized right uh, with a message it requires authentication so that is quite evident that you need to use some kind of authorization you need to pass some authentication to use this particular get request right so let's go ahead and now use this now ideally i can paste the token here directly but it's not a good practice because the token is pretty kind of personal to you and if you're sharing this collection with anyone or workspace with anyone you don't want that person to uh, view this token directly right and obviously it, for security reason it's not recommended to directly use your token openly in this uh, form okay so what we can do is instead of this we can actually create a new one right so let's go to our manage environments and i'm going to create a new environment here which is github okay and i'm going to add here a variable called token with the current value as the token value and i'm going to add this here right so in order to use this i have to select the environment here and then replace this value with the token value okay so this is the right way of using a token so you put it in the variable and then use that variable in this value okay now what we want to do we want to send this request along with the token right so this time it should be successful and uh, you should get a status 200 which we are getting and in the body if you observe it will return you all the repositories which are available in this account right so there is currently just one repository so it is returning me just one element in this array of responses so here is the name hello world right this is the full name this is the login and all other details which you can view for this particular repository okay so this is how you uh, send a request along with uh, authorization which is the better token right so in this case we are using better token but you can use any type of authorization for depending on your api now let's we have already seen how we can add the token to the single request right now say for example uh, i have another request right let's add another request and this time we are going to say get specific repository okay so this is my request and um, let's take the url for this so um where it is so get a repository okay so this is the repository url so let's use this um okay and here or just let me copy this so you can also um, replace this with a base url variable but we'll do it later right so this is our url okay now um, it accepts path variables we already discussed about query parameters and path variables right so this is an example of a request using path variables right so with the help of this owner and repo path variable it will be able to access a particular resource which in this case is a specific repository okay so we need to give the owner here which is nothing but the username so in my case it is qs script 20 and the repo is the repository name right so in this case we need to find uh, this repository so let's pass this value here okay 
now is that enough to send a request okay so it is accepting now what we can do here is um, I wanted to show you an example where you don't need to add this authorization for every request right so in this case we have just two requests but if there is a scenario where you have uh, tens um, kind of 10 20 requests it's not ideal to uh, select an authorization type for every request right uh, or if you if you go outside postman and execute this collection you it won't be ideal to do it that way right so what we can do is we can add this token into our collection right so github is our collection and inside this all our requests are there so what we can do we can edit this collection and we can go to the authorization tab here we can select the type of authorization for our case it is better token and here we can simply use our variable right so it's going to show you that value also here now update this collection okay now uh, this collection has an authorization right so if you edit this collection you will see an authorization is already applied so all the requests can actually inherit that authorization from this collection you don't need to add it separately for every request now instead of using bearer token here right for a request what you can do you can select this option which is inherit auth from parent by default it is already enabled so whenever you add a new request it is going to be enabled by default right so what it is saying it is saying this request is using an authorization helper from the collection github right so it is using the authorization key from the collection itself it doesn't require its own authorization to be added here so let's go ahead and send this request and just verify whether this is working so it's working right even though we haven't uh, given a particular token or, or any selected any authorization it is still able to access this. if you want to verify further you can also delete this token just to be sure right and save this so right now i don't have any better token uh, i'm just inheriting auth from parent and if i send so it's going to execute right so that's how you can add your authorization keys to the collection directly and then it becomes reusable for every request by choosing this inherit auth from parent type right so i hope uh, this was useful uh, and uh, you learned something new today in postman right how you can use a authorization type for your request if you like this video please uh, provide your comments and feedback uh, in this video and i will surely get back to you if you have any further questions in the next video we are going to look at how we can use a post request right so until now we have been looking at all the uh, request types which are get request but we are going to look at a post request how it is different from our get request and what are the parameters we need to pass right so all those things we'll be looking at in our next video so join me in my next video and thanks for watching